to Jackson, you're in chart for the 250 people still watching at midnight. <laughs> you guys, you, Jeez, go you, to bed. yeah, go to bed. <laughs> but that, that's that. Actually, I want to just can people like type in where they're watching from because we're on the West Coast time zone and it's already midnight. So I'm like, are you people in Boston? Are you in South Africa? You want to talk about that? Uh, I can. Yeah. I mean, um, I just, so, was, so get, get, give us our learning moment for the day. All right. One little, one little teachable thing here. So, um, uh, over the years, you know, we, we started, I think I kind of break it down all in this, but uh, you know, usually like when, when we started growing, everything was kind of in small pots and you kind of taught, like, keep them wet. You can't overwater. That's why you use good dirt. If you have bad dirt, it's too dense. Maybe you got to watch out, but you just use good dirt to start. It drains well and you keep it soaking wet. And uh, I remember guys over the years who would just take a dripper and stick it in there and it would come from gravity feed from their spring and they would literally just have water going all the time. Just put a pile of some food on top and let it drip through and, um, and, and everything was always fine. And then we started to grow, um, you're allowed to grow six plants and then you're allowed to grow 25 plants and people try to stick to it. And you figure, oh, wow, okay, I put them in a, now I, I tried putting them in a, I put them in a, you know, a 65 gallon pot, and then they outgrew that, so you try 100, you try 200, you go 300, some people use 600 gallon pots now, you know, they make fabric pots, um, grassroots fabric pots are a killer, killer uh, fabric comp, uh, pot company, um, I'm not sponsored by them, but they're, you know, I recommend their, their pots are cool, but you get these huge pots, um, or you grow in the ground or whatever it is, but you get this huge volume of dirt. And um, one, once they get really, once, once you get really uh, deep soil and it's far from the outside, you know, like uh, when we used to do a little bit of mushroom growing, they would tell us, you know, don't make your container bigger than about 12 inches across and 12 inches deep, because when you get further than that to the inside, you tend to, your, your meat, your, your, your substrate tends to get, um, anaerobic you know and you lose the oxygen in there and you start to get different decay and stuff which you know is is, is similar if you have soil that's really wet and um so we started to notice there was this thing that would happen where we'd look at the plants and we'd be like damn it seems like the beds the plants are so big and it's so hot out like the plants aren't getting water at the bottom anymore or the food's not reaching there because we're getting the deficiencies at the top of the plant and the top there's food and there's a lot and it's wet but what's it like down below and you know sometimes you somebody would like pop off a board off their beds or dig down in their pot to see what was going on and all this different stuff and then uh um i had a thing maybe four or five years ago or something when um when pretty much no one had heard about root aphids and then i had root aphids in my pots and um it was and then i noticed you know my my, my pots i had 65 gallon pots and i had 300 gallon pots and the 300 gallon pots all had root aphids all over the place and the plant started to look a little weird and the top of the plant kind of starts to yellow the leaves curl down a little bit when they flower that flower develops a little slower it usually winds up really killer because it's technically it's underfed it's not getting the nutrients and a lot of times that's good uh tasty weed like in jamaica what they call ital weed when you plant it and you don't feed it and so um we were kind of like, well, what, so what's the deal here? Is it underwatered, overwatered, underfed, overfed? Is it accumulating salt at the bottom? What the hell's going on? You know, and I, and I would see it at different people's places. And a lot of the time it would be like one plant. So you'd go, I don't know, you know, whatever, and we'll figure it out. But everything else is killing it. So you don't want to change your program that much. Um, and the plants are still huge. It's just this little tip. You're like, this should be the biggest buds, but they're not, they're a little bit more lean and they're not really what they should be. So, um, at a certain point, um, I, I, because I had the 65s going and I had the 300s going, uh, I, I actually, um, I actually hit up bamboo cause, uh, bamboo, you know, is, uh, he's a, a smart dude. He's experienced with a lot of stuff and he's, he's uh, well-educated. He has, uh, you know, a better education than me and, uh, and a lot of experience to go along with it. And, you know, he goes to Davis and does classes on breeding and talks to a lot of, a lot of people and, uh, and, uh, 
you know, cells, beneficials and all this kind of stuff. So I hit him up and I go, you know, what's the deal with these things? And he goes, well, you want to do nematodes? And then he goes, you know, it, it's usually a sign if they're out of control that you're overwatering. And um, before this, I had already kind of known a little bit about the overwatering causing the yellowing, but you get the root aphids in, it's exasperated. It's just much, much higher levels of the same symptoms when you get the root aphids. And then I thought, oh, it's the root aphids causing these symptoms. So I noticed that my 65s that dried out on a regular basis, I couldn't find any root aphids in them, but the root aphids came in bags of this particular soil that I bought. And it, and I had used that soil for, for five and a half inch pots. And so all my starts had come from the same infected soil. So I was having a hard time going, okay, the 65s they don't exist in and the 300s, they're just rampant. So what's the difference here? And luckily I had that little bit of control to look at. So I realized that, you know, because, because Bamboo was the one who mentioned, he goes, you know, it's usually overwatering if they're really out of control. And I was like, okay. And um, so I try all this stuff, but then I just realized that then I see that it's definitely the watering thing. So I back off on the water. Well, the root aphids basically disappear and these symptoms disappear. And, um, and so uh, I'm throwing this in there because this is a little bit of bonus information because people don't really know this about root aphids. Root aphids don't really hang around in soil that drains well. Like that's how it works in vineyards and things where they can be a huge problem. If the soil is different, then they just kind of peter out and they don't um, keep a population and they, and they eventually um, eradicate themselves. So anyway, um, the post was basically just saying, hey, you can buy this $40 water meter. You stick it down to the bottom of your pot and you can tell if that's the reason because you could be getting the same symptom from it being too dry as well at the bottom of your pots. And people who really have their shit together a lot of times will elevate their pots and put them up on like some big rock, like some gravel, so they can drain extra well. And that will help with that size pot so that instead of it being um, up against something that's wet all the time, there's air underneath them. And, you know, the kind of the thing about fabric pots is they cause air pruning. So your roots hit the side and then they branch extra. And if you have a regular pot made out of plastic and you go to like, like in a seven gallon or something, you go to pick it up, you'll notice there's not a lot of roots around the stock. The roots have circled around the outside, but in a fabric pot or an air pot or a root builder pot, what happens is they reach the outside and then they branch. And so um, by actually putting them up on some rock, then you gain that same benefit at the very bottom a little bit more because they, they root prune. What happens is they hit the air and it sends them a signal that don't go any further, you know, branch out and they bush off the same way as if you're to top a plant for people who are familiar with what happens when you, when you top your plants, you know? Um, so anyway, the, the post was just telling people like, Hey, if it looks like this, get a water meter, a moisture meter, because it's likely you're overwatering. And then sometimes you discover like you'll have you'll have plants and, and you'll notice like one leaf will droop and then another leaf will droop. And you'll be like, the whole plant looks beautiful, but there's like five leaves and that are drooping. And it'll come and go and you can't figure out what's going on. And a lot of times what'll happen is you have in the roots you have um you have dry spots that are in there and you can't tell you take the moisture meter and you probe it around and you go, okay, I'm giving it enough water, but right over here in this little area, it's not getting enough water. So you need to kind of make a little, make a little, uh, a, a little recessed area and let the water go there extra to even it out. And then you'll notice it goes away. And, uh, um, so anyway, just watering, it's funny cause you can be super experienced working in one way, but then you go to try to grow these monster plants or you hook up drip and you're used to hand watering or you change emitters or you don't realize it, but where your emitter goes in the line, um, there's a leak. So you're getting triple the water and you don't know it because you haven't been inspecting it all the time because you just figure your stuff works. Um, so uh, it was just a, a heads up to people that watering winds up being um, really, although it seems like the simplest part of growing something, give it water, the water levels are huge. And um, people who monitor it um, really scientifically, 
you know, they, they let the, they let it swing. They go, okay, we take the moisture up to 80, we let it drop to 20, and, you know, in veg, you do it different and in bloom, you do it different. And I, I'm not somebody who does everything monitored really carefully like that, but I do like to monitor it well enough that I'm not having, I, I'm not taking a big hit. You know, I don't grow under gavitas with least space. So it doesn't really matter to me if my plant gets this slightly different yield. But what I can't have is just a, um, is a, uh, um, you know, a failure where the plant is just all messed up, you know? So uh, that's what the post was. It's a good summary. So th this is, uh, you had posted something about tobacco, right? Yeah. And so actually I think Steve, Raisner dropped off, but these are from seeds he gave me. And so I have like this little one and then uh, like this one. And I love, I love, so what I love about these things is at night they get totally erect and they just like all the leaves shoot straight up. And then in the daytime, they all just droop and get super lazy, like lounging, which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I've noticed uh, what's trippy is that uh, I have mine in an area where they're shaded for part of the day. And then it's like they um, adjust their their um their uh level of uh, of wa water uh uptake and transpiration so it's like you put them in the i have them in the shade and then they're like really happy and then the sun hits them and then they start to wilt and but then if i put them out where they get the sun really early in the morning um then it's like they can stay more level and they know it's it's like they're ready for it and so then they just look normal um all of the time and that was something that I didn't I didn't really realize and it happened kind of with all the different plants that I had that were in the shade and then the sun hit them when it was already intense which was kind of like pulling a almost like pulling a plant out of a greenhouse um, when it's hot out they want to freak out a little bit and stuff um, can I add to uh, the uh, the overwatering thing so yeah really good point to make you know, overwatering is probably the most common mistake made by growers, you know, from expert to beginner. Um, it's just really easy to do. And for outdoor growers, you know, when I'm, when I have like new people on a farm that I'm running and I'm, you know, trying to take people with very little experience and try to cram all my experience into them, you know, it's, it's really, you just take everything, you simplify it, you know, in the springtime, it's colder out, your plants have smaller root systems they need a lot less water, you know, um, as they grow, you know, they need more. But the biggest indicator that I always tell people, because you know what Jackson's talking about, where you see that, you know, I've seen gardens where people have 10 pound plants and it's just one half of the plant or one little branch. And if they don't catch it early and start treating it with the right type of, you know, like a nematode or other like inoculants, um, you know, you can lose those plants, you know, and you see it pretty commonly. So the indicator that I always tell people when I'm teaching them is underwatering and overwatering both have the same signs in the leaves is your leaves are droops, right? And so the only difference, it's really common sense and really basic is if your leaves are overwatered and you feel right there in the leaf stem, you're going to feel that it's rigid and that it's filled with water inside. It's nice and stiff. And if your plants are underwatered, your leaves are still drooping. And this is going to be all fucking weak because there's no fucking water in there. And you can feel it pretty easily. So that's kind of like a beginner's tip to, to seeing if you've overwatered or underwatered. They have the same look, but it's just as simple as seeing if there's moisture inside the stem. And another thing that I think helps guide people in, in learning um, how not to overwater is if you underwater and you're vigilant and you pay good attention to detail in your plants you can just add more water it's, it's fine if you overwater, you have to fucking let it dry out before you can do anything about it so it's better to underwater than overwater if you had to make one of those mistakes and a good grower is going to be vigilant pay a lot of attention to detail catch it before it becomes a problem 
simply add more water. If you continue to overwater, it'll lead to, you know, potential pest problems like the root aphids, but everything else from viruses and really anything that can harm a plant from pH fluctuations and lack of nutrient uptake. So yeah, overwatering, big common mistake. And it's just as simple as just knowing what to look for. Thank you.